disclaimer, if everyone can uh, mute your mics, except for you, Russell, obviously, um, so that uh, there's no extraneous noise during the, the, um, the session. If you've got any questions, write them in the Zoom chat that's off to the side. You, if you haven't got this chat up um, down the bottom of the screen, you'll be able to click on that to load that. Uh, and then um, at the end, we'll have some more announcements. Um, if you're finding that uh, the presentation is a bit laggy or, or a bit out of focus, um, a few of us might uh, turn off our um, video connections during the, uh, the presentation to um, uh, improve your local bandwidth. Um, welcome to you all and welcome to Russell, who's uh, a member of the Melbourne Drummer User Group for many years. Uh, and tonight's presentation is on U Theme Pro 2, which uh, I'm sure Russell will outline, is also available for WordPress, I understand. Um, yep. But, uh, I'll hand over to Russell now, um, and uh, I'll uh, let you uh, complete your own introduction. Okay, thank you very much, Patrick, and thanks for everybody for, for turning up. It's the big roll up tonight. I <laughs> know um, oh I've, I've given this topic a, a bit of a big rap, so there's no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to be doing my best to try and do this subject justice. Um, so, okay. Uh, this is not exactly what you signed up for, but I'll, I'll point out the differences as, as I go along. Um, Okay, I'm going to try and do this share, sharing screen. Um, I'm new at this and there's a fair bit of moving parts here, so bear with me, okay? Okay, host disabled participant screen sharing. So Patrick's got that one. Any good? Can I share my screen? You should be able to now. Yep. No. Uh... Okay. All right. Well. Um, okay. Which one do I want? Screen one. That'll be it. Okay. Now we see you. Okay. How about the screen? Yeah, we're seeing your screen now. Okay. Let me just move the gallery out of the way. Okay, got it. Okay, so um, I've uh, I've put a fair bit of work uh, into this subject, and you know the research in this area for quite some time now, um, uh, over probably around about two and a half years or something. I've been interested in this subject, and uh, uh, I've I've worked it up into a bit of a passion, I suppose, a bit of an obsession. Uh, you might say, um, and on the strength of that, I've treated this presentation as a uh, as a project uh, over the last few weeks. Um, and as I worked through it, as I wrote it and, and built it out, uh, it grew on me, and I learned a, learned a lot in the process. And I had a lot of fun um, as I worked through some of this stuff. Uh, and I, I decided that I just wanted to share the results that I got uh, out of the last couple of years on and off um, of looking at this area. So because it's grown, um, this presentation has turned into a bit of a story uh, with a few twists and turns. Um, I've done my best to make it engaging uh, and, and to, to make it something of a, a story, something of a voyage of discovery. And I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that I've got something working in that area. So it's not exactly uh, just a page builder tour. This is a deep dive uh, into Youth Theme Pro. Uh, and you'll see that uh, over the next, uh, say, three quarters of an hour. Uh, and I hope this is useful. Uh, for all you guys, and I hope it's hope it's a bit of fun for you as well. So this is the stuff we'll be doing. Um, this is the outline. I'm going to look at two sides uh, of page builders in general. The first uh, half of that, and by far the biggest part, is the designer experience. I mean the experience of, of web designers um, you know, that, that you get out of 
uh, you, you, these actual products. And there's a couple of points to be made there. There's a tour of, of um, some page builders, some, some of the best page builders, um, so that I can make some general points about how page builders work. Uh, and how they fit into our environment and our work process. And in passing, there'll be a few comments on uh, how the product wraps over WordPress and Joomla. Uh, the other, the, there'll be a shorter section after that to do with the developer experience because there's a developer angle to these products as well. Um, and I'll be talking about what Utheme Pro does for custom fields uh, and the UI kit front end foundation that underlies the whole shooting match. And I think it's quite fascinating what they've done. I think they've thought it out really well. Um, and they've, they've really come up with something, um, certainly in a, uh, the, the, certainly they set the bar higher. I would say that much. Okay, so, oh, next one. Sorry, bear with me. <laughs> oh, it's jammed on me, hang on. Okay. Here we go. Um, so this part's about the designer experience. So over the last couple of years, I've looked at eight or nine different page builders uh, in some depth, and I've shortlisted three of them to have a very quick look at tonight. So yeah, when I'm trying to do web design, when I'm trying to do the design part of the job, what I'm really hoping for you know, that I will have to work in uh, is an open workspace. But kind of like, you know, a flat white table and to have smart palettes spread around on it with art and layout tools. But I also want that environment to be unified with the CMS as much as possible, you know, for that experience to be seamless. Okay, so, so I'm looking for a bit of a comfort factor there for, for something that's related to a creative experience. And in a word, that would be flow. And I, I think um, a lot, and probably everybody would be you know, familiar with that feeling when you get into a groove um, and things are working for you and you know, you, you've got a sense of where you're going um, and you're following it through to a conclusion and you just kind of, you know, you, you, you've got it going. And to me, the, you know, the markers of this experience, there are some questions, you know, that, that I would ask around that. And the first is, is the page builder workspace comfortable to live in? Okay. Because you're going to spend a lot of time in there. You've got to work with all these assets and move them around and, you know, balance them. How well does it fit inside the Joomla platform? And what's the range of the page builder itself within the design process? Now, I don't want to overstate the point on that. Um, we are talking about a subjective experience here, and I don't want to diss anybody's, um, you know, the, the page builder that they may be using or the page builder that they may prefer. This is not about that. This is about comparing some of these tools and looking at you know, how they work um, from a designer point of view as, as a designer workspace. So up until around about, you know, this is my perspective, but I think that page builders, vintage around about 2018, that they, this was more or less their range, their range of action within the design process. That, you know, the template essentially controlled the style, the layout of the site. The template also controls the header bar and the main menu, the main nav. Okay. And then you have your content area, your standard Joomla content area, and the page builder is mainly used in that context. 
to you know to build the body of pages but then you've got some pages that need sidebars so you can use the page builder over here as well to build modules to build ritual modules to lie around um, uh, in those areas uh, off the side of the content area and then you have the footer which again is controlled by the template now i think these days things have changed over the last couple of years now the class of page builders that we're starting to see coming out are more like this okay whether it's the page builder it might be within a template there might be template settings or something like that, or there might in fact be some blurry lines there, but the page builder itself manages the header and menu as a block, and there's also usually a toolbar right up the top of that. And then arranged around the body area of the page, you have modules, modules and modules, modules in the sidebar, modules in top and bottom positions, and they're not positions anymore, they're container areas and then you have a footer but you you know you got classes of page builders now whose province is basically that whole page design including the navigation and including the stuff that Joomla contributes to the page okay so one of the things that I think uh, has something to do with the designer experience in these tools is something that I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to coin a term here and call it cognitive friction. That when you have inconsistent interfaces between the system, the general system, and the design tool that you're working in, when they're inconsistent, then they feel dissonant, and that this causes slight discomfort for the user. Now, again, I don't want to overstate that. It's, it's a subjective experience, strictly a matter of preference. Um, and it's not meant, you know, as a product evaluation criteria, except in the, you know, the most subjective sense. <clears throat> okay. Nevertheless, I think that UX design is very concerned with these nuances, you know, these little, these little bumpy bits in tools and that the, the front end designers are putting all their effort uh, into trying to smooth out the user experience and make it as, as slick and productive as possible. And that, you know, that, that they sell products on that basis. <clears throat> okay. So, I want to illustrate that point uh, by uh, a short list of. Hello? Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. I want to illustrate that point by just having a look at the, the surface um, of three, three of the best. Um, page builders that, that I have run into and the, the three best that I've, that I've got out of the shortlist. So we'll just have a look at these. There's blocks, which has been covered in these forums before. Here we go. <clears throat> okay. Now, the thing about blocks, to get to blocks, it's a standard component. Okay, and here are some sample pages that I've just basically imported from the blocks library. Here is one of them. It's of a, a home page type, it's a full page. Okay, dirty big hero. And here we have blocks as controls, trash, you know, settings, edit this, edit the add-on. And when we edit it, a window opens up where we can set the attributes of the add-on, you know, the background image, text, font and, and other typography stuff is, is set differently. That's set at a site level. So here we are just working on a page. Okay, we can put that away, work our way down the page and you know, add new blocks. When we add a, add a new block, well, sorry, I should not have done that. I should have worked from the, no, I'm confused myself again. I'm thinking nice page now instead of blocks. Okay, here's the elements. And the key to the Joomla part of the system are these basic, basic blocks, these basic assets. Uh, one for an image, a title, a, a, a title paragraph, um, a paragraph in a document, 
a Joomla module if you want one, an article. Um, K2, there's all this stuff, okay, and for each of these things you can import these elements direct from blocks if you have a license. It simply installs a component that you might want to use on a site. Does it on the spot, just takes seconds. <laughs> okay. I'll just pick another one. Here's an audio player. The audio player drops into the layout in the container that it belongs to and you can set it directly here and you have the settings boxes over here and the various different controls and if you want to see responsive views that's done with this little palette um, of view sizes over here okay so this is blocks Um, and you can also build modules the same. Um, you have a catalogue of pages and there's lots of those, 148 different categories. Well, not so much categories, but you know, assets or pages, page designs within categories. And any of these can be downloaded to your machine uh, as you wish it. You can use them on a new page and then modify them as you need to. Okay. When all of that's said and done and you want to show that content on, on menu pages, okay, then you do that here. This home menu item okay, is a single article. Um, a blocks page is available, so you can call a block page, blocks page directly. Uh, sorry, this site, that's a single article. But if I wanted a blocks page, actually on a menu item, where am I? I would have to pick one. Here we go. Okay. And that picks the real estate template to deploy, to display on this menu page. So if I actually go to that menu page, And you see how the host template actually controls the layout of the page. Okay. This is the blocks demo page, all right, but it's a content area. In this case, a full screen content area. Okay. But the template is left to handle basically the Joomla mechanics for blocks. Okay. So um, I'll get out of that. few errors in these demos. Now, back to the presentation. So I think the weak point really in Blox's user experience for designers is that bit, menu and module integration. Now I believe that Blox does have some inbuilt menu management, um, but it's not it's not immediately apparent. I will say it's not convenient, um, but I think that it has an, an el you can ins insert an element on a page where you can actually manage uh, the underlying menu items. But by and large, um, Blocks produces content and you put it on menu items um, within the menu and you use the Joomla system to do that, um, which kind of puts it in this category. Okay. Um, now it's got a lot of content um, and it, it's got a, a lot of material and I, I have to say that this, for all the testing I've done, it seems to be very template agnostic. You can install it in um, just about, it's worked in just about every template from half a dozen different template providers that I have used. So it's a good general purpose tool um, and it, it's certainly got a lot to recommend. Now the next one is NicePage. 
which kind of half came from the Joomla world and half from WordPress, from, from WordPress and the other half <laughs> from Drupal and, and it was a very um, broad product because it initially came from Artistier, which used to export to all of those platforms and even Concrete 5 um, back in those days. Um, I, I did some, some trials with that. Artistier um, didn't work as a client-based product, so they relaunched it as, uh, as a web product named Femla, which had a bunch of content, content sites associated with it, all branded with the Billion brand. So they've got a lot of content um, behind this product. And the same team, as far as I can tell, have carried that concept and that product line all the way through to NicePage. And NicePage is really you know, a first-class builder. A lot of people have reservations about you know, the, the you know, perhaps messy class names, um, a lot of verbiage, a lot of overweight um, on the web pages. Um, but it works, it, for sure it works. Uh, so we'll just have a quick look at that as well. Just to contrast really the, you know, the interface style for the thing. Here is a nice page. <clears throat> okay, now here's nice page sitting up there in the toolbar and you would think that you would get to it the same as you do with blocks but it's not like that. This gets you straight into the builder with a blank page, this new page option. Import data lets you import a page definition, although I haven't been able to figure out where you export those page definitions. Configuration is essentially site configuration and colors and fonts is essentially typography for the whole site. And when you wanna set that typography, um, so far as I know, you set it from a default standard and you set the elements uh, the way you want them for the styling of the site. And this seems to me to be a bit labour intensive. But here is the typography. Okay, here's all the elements. Okay, all this stuff. When you click these things, you get the dialog boxes, you get all the settings, and you can adjust the site and the styling to suit yourself. I mean, obviously, you're going to want your own fonts. Obviously, you're going to want your own color palette. And you probably want to set you know, your, your colors for your standard bootstrap elements as well. That, that much you've got to do. The rest of it you can set in detail. And the palette for setting these items for setting the typography items just slides out from the side here and then goes away when you don't want it. Not so this thing. This stays there, but that's all right. It doesn't really get in the way. So if we get out of this now, the entry point to nice page is not so much there, it's in the articles. So nice page um, expects to be used to build pages, to build individual pages, although it can be used um, to build a template, you know, which then provides styling for you know, a category of articles. But by and large, when you get into, uh, it, when, when you want to work with a page, you work with it on an article level. You see here when we open up the brand design article, we've actually got a, a pretty nice thumbnail, a rendering of the whole page. So that, you know, it starts to be nice at this point. It starts to be, you know, inviting the nice page product. And to get from here into the page itself, we just click the edit with nice page button and we are off. And once we are in the page builder, Okay. We can choose other pages and work on other pages okay. and save them as we go. So you can have a whole session in here and you don't have to go back to Joomla. And, and you know, that's kind of, you know, from a design experience, that's kind of the way you want it. Um, now, if you want to add blocks um, into a container, for instance, here are the blocks. And this is, you know, this is, this is a setup 
that really is is kind of the evolution of what Artistia did um, and what Themla did before it. There are all these block designs, okay, for all of these different purposes, for different styling, okay, different layouts, all this stuff. Some of it is free. Some of it, um, and the, the majority of the library, the asset library that you get with nice Pods, you get with a premium subscription over here, which I think is about a hundred bucks US a year. Um, for the amount of assets you get, because you can use all this stuff, you use all of it on your site, you're all licensed for all of it. Although you're gonna want you know, custom things, but yeah. Uh, generics like pricing tables, counters, you know, progress bars, testimonials, these things. Yeah, you, you, you can get away with a lot of that stuff without any additional media. Down here, um, hiding away, we've got elements. No, not that. Sorry. Down here, hiding away. Yep, there's a menu element. Okay, which is actually sensitive to the Joomla menu, like this. Okay, so you can, you can embed the menu element in your head of design or anywhere else for that matter. And this is a, you know, a little front-end driven, JavaScript driven menu maintainer. And it, it, it lets you pick you know, a particular uh, type of document a page or a block that came from, you know, the nice page library, or, sorry, that, it, that has already been defined on this page, a phone number or an email. And these, these pages, these are just content pages within, you know, within your article store. Okay, so that's how that menu item points to the brand design page. Okay, I am still hunting for some, I'm hunting for, ah, here we go. This is where, as opposed to menus, this is where modules, Joomla modules and WordPress widgets get inserted into the site. All the way down here under, under an object, an asset type called position. Okay, you can insert a thing called the position and the position can contain in Joomla, um, you know, put a, a position that stands for a module position. Uh, that's the contents of a module that you might have built in nice page or something else. Okay, and you can embed it in the page through this means. Which is, you know, that's not obvious. Yeah, that's... It works and it also works for WordPress widgets. Okay, and it's not that often that you actually want to embed um, a module onto a page design, but it, it makes for it, it's just slightly uncomfortable to do that. Whereas the rest of this product is, you know, is just top class. All the assets that they've got and they've inherited from you know, the Boolean graphics site and all the fine grained detail and control that they've built into the UI. Um, it's, uh, it really does produce great sites. And in addition to that, you can grab an object within a design and you can pixel drag it to some other position, you know, which in, in most of these front end frameworks is, is a big deal. You've, you've got to set your positioning attributes in CSS to get this to happen. Whereas this product just moves it. And um, yeah, if you want to do those overlaid designs, then that's really nice. Okay, so, okay, so. Um, back to the presentation. Sorry, I'm getting there. 
so nice page is one of these types of page builders one of the ones that takes over control of the whole geography of the and is also inclusive of the gym or specific elements. Is a very strong product. It's well supported. It has a very which um, um, we will look at. It's not as extensive as, as most places in library, you know, it's actually near the size of Technical difficulties, one more. Uh, any questions while we're waiting for Russell to come back? Yeah, I'd be very interested in the um, especially nice page. I wouldn't trust it because of the theme, um, the um, its background history. But it keeps us changing names when it's had enough and it can't do any more. But all that said, it would be nice to know what um, page load speeds and that were like and. In nice page, I didn't see anywhere there particularly to um, control the um, uh, the mobile views and so on. Like Blocks had its set up there to do that in. Yeah. Welcome back, Russell. I don't know what happened then. You, we lost you. Yeah, the connection went out. Sorry. All right. All right. Where am I? Um, if you've got your video on, just turn your video cameras off, everyone. Okay, can you see the screen? We can, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, you think. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, it's my first try, be kind. <laughs> All right, so you think. This is you think. Now, what I have done here um, to demo you think is uh, I've installed one of the you think demo packages which means that Utheme Pro has around about maybe 30, 40 templates have been issued for it. You would think of them as templates, um, but essentially you get all of them with a Utheme Pro extension, which you will see. They will all be available uh, on pages uh, or on screen or on module design. Uh, they're all just sitting there and they get installed and they get updated every time that you that you load a new one so okay but the demo sites themselves have all the engineering behind all the features that they've built into you theme pro so that's really a the major way um, to get to get a look at uh, what you theme pro does in detail so here's the site now, Utheme Pro just sits here as a full class extension and you just get into it from here. You can also get into it from the articles like the others, okay? But basically, um, they have essentially framed Utheme as, uh, as the place to go for design purposes. So when you get in there, uh, you've just got the whole box and dice sitting here. Uh, and I'm sorry, Jeff. I, uh, I must have missed out the mobile views on Nice Page. They do have a little palette uh, of, of responsive 
a little responsive icon, something like this. It's just elsewhere in the UI. So that's my bad, but it's there all right. Okay, so you theme. Um, it's structured into these areas. There's the layout. That's the layout of the site. Yeah, um, which means, you know, the geography of the page, essentially. The, the, um, style means the styling of the page. Builder uh, is a builder for things uh, within the U-theme system, but it works a little bit differently. Um, it's it's uh, You can directly apply it to pages, but it's got a kind of a broader scope, a little different interpretation, which I think is, has worked out well. Templates are not site templates. Uh, they are templates for particular types of objects. Menus and modules, good old journal menus and modules are first class citizens in the U-theme system. Uh, and settings, of course, is down the bottom. So over here uh, on the, you know, on the page, the display page, what we've got is just basically a full um, embedded web page. It's not in an iframe or anything. It's all you know, JavaScript stuff and it's live. You know, so we just go wherever we want um, within it, hit any links uh, and they work normally. Uh, and the elements that you come up are the elements that you'll actually be working on. And you'll, you'll see that when we get to the builder part of this. Layer. Um, lays out, like I say, the geography of the site, you know, the spacing, um, you know, how it fits, how it behaves, responsive behaviour. These are site elements. Here's the logo, for instance, and most of the U-theme logos are SVGs, which I'm really getting to like now. They're really getting to be handy. In addition to the standard logo placement, you also get to place an inverse one. So that you think knows when you've got a dark page background versus a light page background, then it will use the inverted logo. Okay, so it works. Um, and I have it you know, working in the admin template um, on this site. So you can see that at work as well. Uh, and a different logo for mobiles, layouts, images, toolbars, and so forth. Okay, that's straightforward. Header, what kind of header would we like? Okay, so just pick something that works for the application for the type, you know, the, the type of target market that you're looking at or the type of device organization or the mix, you know, that, um, that, you, that you have to, you, you're trying to target. Yeah, and that might be specific to a particular landing page or it might be site-wide. This, I think, is site-wide, but you can vary that. Um, all the settings for the nav bars, drop downs, and so forth. So here's the detail. Here's where we start to see the documentation system, which is just so nicely put together. You click that anywhere it appears, that documentation, and here you have a gallery of videos, and they're short videos. Okay, where you know, one of the youth, one of the youth team trainers, and it's always the same young lady. She's you know, got very good diction, very clear, um, and she'll just run you through all of these, uh, all of these little tricks um, to use it when you need to use them. You can hit a read more link uh, for any particular topic. Hello. <laughs> okay, this topic, setting the nav bar. Not only is the movie there, but you've got all the, all the options that you can set, samples, okay? The tips and tricks, how to insert various different types of objects, yeah? your variations, columns, widths, off canvas, look, all that stuff, okay? It's all, whoa, come back. And here, this search link searches this topic in the U-theme support wiki. So 
you know, if there's something, some specific behaviour that you're seeing that you want to check out, you can go directly to the wiki and see if there have been any reports and any responses. And this goes straight to the wiki where you can basically search for any sort of content that you want. And in true mobile fashion, you just click off that and click somewhere on the page area and it will just go away by itself. Mobile, separate settings from mobile, mostly to do with the behaviour, the breakpoint behaviour with mobile and different behaviour. Top, sidebar, bottom and footer are those module areas arranged around the content area on the page, but you can navigate and design them specifically here. And you can set them specifically here. Okay, now blog and post. Let's go back to the, to the presentation for a moment. <clears throat> okay, this is where we run into the WordPress versus Joomla um, topic, subject area. Um, Utheme Pro, as far as I can tell, is the exact same builder and works the same in both CMSs once you get into it. Um, and that basically means that it does help to level the playing field. That it means that you can compose the exact same site in WordPress or Joomla. And I think really that that gives some of us an opportunity to look at the platform that customers are actually using, that they're choosing for their sites. So they don't have to automatically choose WordPress okay, because they can have the exact same equivalent site on um, <coughs> Um, a more stable environment. Utheme makes concessions to both WordPress and Joomla, and these are differences in idiom, in, in terminology. Sorry, one of, the, one of the first of these is the distinction between posts and pages. So in WordPress fashion, posts are blog posts, and pages are individually designed pages that are built with a page builder. In Joomla terms, that translates to categorised articles, articles that have any kind of category on them, versus articles that are uncategorised. Although you can do specific page designs for categorised articles, you can single out a particular post in a category and you can do a specific design for that. You can break it out of its category. Um, and Utheme Pro is okay with that. But other than that, when you're designing post designs, you're designing um, for category blog layouts or for category post layouts. And this is WordPress terminology. It, yeah, it was a little bit of a wrench to start off with, but I'm okay with it now. I think it makes sense, and particularly in terms of what they've done with the tool. So we have templates. That's what templates is about in the Utheme system. It's for designing the layout of category blogs and posts, while pages, individual pages, are individually designed. On the WordPress side of the fence, Utheme Pro is making deliberate efforts to support major WordPress plugins. And you know, I know there's a couple of big ones that they've brought out in the last 10 days or so that brought out support for. That's important to the WordPress community. I can't really tell you much about it. And once again, you've got to be aware when designing pages, you're designing it in the context of top, bottom, footer and sidebar. And those things can be separately designed or they can be design elements. Okay, so back to the back to the browser, back to the system. <clears throat> okay, so that's what blogs and posts are about. These settings for blogs and posts in the layout section are about setting the geography and to some extent the behavior of blogs and posts on the site. And here are templates. What's going on here? At the moment, I'm looking at an article, okay, in the company section, which is featured, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, e-commerce, okay, that's where my breadcrumbs have taken me at the moment. I am in companies and I am, I'm in e-commerce. And although I'm in, I've 
gone into templates here and you theme pro is telling me that what i'm looking at on this page is a company category layout it's a category blog layout and if i want to do some design and i just hit the builder button and off we go okay here is the headline which is outlined for me was outlined for me okay and this is where the content comes from now there's going to be more to say about this okay because this is already a custom field okay uh, and here's that's because i picked company post we will get to that in a little while i'll pick a magazine post instead okay now i'm looking at a post index from having picked that magazine magazine item magazine menu item so i found myself looking at the template for a post index this i can work with okay this thing here this is a sub nav with a u theme element um, and it has one set of categories on it they're custom categories <coughs> sorry copied that Okay, sub nav. Come on. Ah, oh, sorry, click through the link. Now I'm looking at a post category, okay, and the builder page is available for that. i start working on that thing. Now, if I wanted um, to change the design or I wanted a new design for a new category blog or template for a category blog the library sits here and library is basically behind every yeah, every library button that you can see when you're creating new objects this is the way you theme have laid out all their themes the way they've made them available you know, every theme and every theme element um, to you know, every site that's licensed for you theme pro so what are we looking at here I might be after a case study layout and these are their case study layouts from all the different websites that they've published for Utheme Pro so far. And like I say, every month they, do, they, they release a new style, a new you know, template. That's a new demo site that you can play with, but also the new style will automatically appear in this list and all its assets will appear in the library as well. So I might know, you know in this particular instance that I'm dealing with it. You know, the style that I've chosen for this site is Creative Hub. That's what it has, happens to be. You can see its logo up there. Okay. Here are all the layouts that Creative Hub has to offer. What's this one? This is the services layout. There we go. Okay. All right. So you can replace the layout. You can insert it at the top, insert it at the bottom. Save the layout as a custom, and in which case it becomes part of your library. Okay. So it's doing the design for blog layouts. And there is some very clever, very, very nice code um, to be found on some of these things, on some of these designs. And I would have to recommend you know, their, their demo sites uh, for learning about these products and how, how to put them to use. Um, it's really been very instructive. The builder itself, it says, it's telling me now that I am looking at a template. Okay. It just knows that because of my position in the site. So I can open the templates from here and start work on the template. Other than that, if there are single pages, like say the home page, okay, it's custom design, <coughs> build up goes straight into that page. The grid down here. That's this one here. Okay, got a number of articles, got a number of items which resolve to all of these cards, all of these cards with this rich content. 
So it's, it's a bit overwhelming, yeah, and I, I did find it um, hard work to get started with it. And um, it, it took me a while to get my head around it, but uh, it, it's really holding up very well. Here's the main menu. Okay, and this actually manages the main menu itself. A full service is a menu item that we have seen a minute ago, and here it is, category blog. Category blog, okay, which is a standard Joomla article type, that one. Okay, and the category is full service. So the article is sitting over there and it's holding a whole bunch of well, it's holding ordinary content because it's a post and you know, the U-theme post template provides the styling for it and interprets the contents. Same with modules. Okay, here to get listed is a module, this one here. Okay, and we can control that. just like it's a module. There we go. This here, this is the JCE Editor Pro. This is the latest version of JCE Editor Pro and it, it cooperates seamlessly with the Utheme system and it renders Utheme objects in these content windows and it shows you the code, okay? And it's even, of course, sensitive to, sensitive to the classes. Perhaps not there, but certainly over here. We've got all these things here. Okay, and displayed so that they make sense. Okay, so, and that's just, that's a module, which has now become a first class element in the page design. Okay. <laughs> Russell, could you, could you show everyone the um, styles section of the builder as well and what paper? Sorry, there? sorry, I missed that. That was big. Uh, now this, yep. Yeah, sorry, I was just wanting you to show the style uh, process and what, how you can customise that. You're right, Matthew, I got sidetracked. Um, so this is the style for the site. Creative Hub, as it says, which is the name of a Utheme template. But we are not stuck with that. Okay. We might, indeed, well, we might have decided that we're using Creative Hub for this site. Okay. But we've got the variations. If I wanted it to be green, it becomes Creative Hub white green. Even things like um, gradients just work nicely. Okay. And you try out a bunch of different you know, typographies, different um, colour schemes and so forth on the fly and see how they look and use different ones for different pages if you have to do that. Um, of course, we mostly don't. This is, this is just, this is a really nice thing. If you click this, preview all UI components, you see all the typography for the site. And it's all active. And you might have noticed these little tooltips floating around over, over the elements on both types of pages. This here, for instance, this is a primary button. And the tooltip is saying button and grid. And button and grid refer in their turn to elements of the UI kit framework that sits underneath the page builder. Button is this component, okay? And this is where you set the attributes of the button component in different sizes, different styles, primary, secondary, danger, disabled, and all the rest of that, okay? And you actually set it on this palette here and these samples will show you exactly what the effect will be. And when you go back to the page, that will have happened. Grid, similarly, is a UI kit component, UI kit asset. And it works the same way. You set the settings here, okay? And these elements will change 
correspondingly. And this element, like the default grid item, is controlled by attributes set for background, grid and padding. So it's showing you where you are. It's showing you where you are in UI kit as well as in the design. Over here, we've got little keys, you know, little cues that pop up. This little A that pops up against this means A, A is for auto calculated. What that means is the value for that is calculated from the less CSS files that UI kit is coded in you know, for the styling of this site. And the same here. Okay, so it will show you where there are overrides. And if I actually physically change something, the display of that item will change and show me where the overrides are. And, and all the way down. Sorry, yep. Ross, another, yeah. another thing to point out to everyone is that when you make a change, for instance, to the default settings within the styling, a dot will appear to the left-hand side to tell you and indicate that you've actually made a change to there. So if you want to revert back to the original settings, all you have to do is uh, click on that dot and it'll default back to the original um, settings that came with the styling too. So yeah, yep. it's really good. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's just really well thought out. So here we have global settings for the site. Typography, primary, secondary, tertiary, the color palette. Theming is, has got more to do with geography, I think, and, and some standard elements on pages. But even little things like this, theme and position and text for a section title, which happens to be vertical. My God, who does that? <laughs> wow. Um, Inverse assets for dark pages, and of course, it shows you all of that on a dark page, so you've got, you, know, you'll, you know what you're looking at. And Google Fonts is your control for all of the fonts um, and the weights that you're going to set for those, followed by all the components in UI Kit, which you can set here, because in point of fact, the page builder is a driver for UI Kit under the covers. So you know, we're digging down, we're drilling down underneath this page builder already, okay, drilling down to the technology underneath. Um, and it's, it's got a, a level of consistency, you know, as a stack, um, which I, I have to say is unusual at the very least. Over here, of course, we've got, you know, your, your responsive design views. If we just get rid of the UI components, then we're back to looking at the page. How does the page behave on devices? Does that cover it, Matthew? Yeah, no, it's 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 pretty good. Oh, as, far as, as far as coding, <laughs> if you wanted to add additional custom coding, then you would go to the UI Kit website where you've got additional coding that you can. Then yeah, I've got I've got that coming up. Sorry, I'm going to shut up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I've got a cramp. Oh, sitting on this chair. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> okay, better now. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah, as a toolkit, you know, I mean, we haven't left this for one second. Okay, and we could have designed the entire contents of the site. I mean, you know, the content um, part of the site, uh, the data set part of the site. It could all be done from here, uh, except for the fact, of course, that the, the, there's the articles themselves that sit behind this. Come on, baby. Let me out. There we go. <clears throat> now I cheated, okay? I cheated on this site to make it even look a little bit smoother between U-theme and the site itself. Um, because what I've done is actually customise the admin theme for the site so that it's borrowed the same typography as U-theme itself. So when I go into U-theme, 
Okay, it's using the same fonts and the same sizes. When I work on these things here and I see the module display, <clears throat> okay, this is the same typography as U theme. So, yeah, this is, this is a little trick that I stumbled across um, and I thought, you know, that's nice, that makes it even neater. So I thought I would pass that on. That's over here. Okay. That little chunk of code goes into a file called custom CSS that can live in the ISIS administrator template CSS directory. Okay. And it, it does that trick, which um, really does you know, make it look seamless from my point of view. Okay, now moving on. <clears throat> so we've covered WordPress and Joomla. And that's what I had to say about the designer experience. Yeah. Um, how comfortable it is, you know, how, how livable it is uh, as, as a design workspace from my point of view. So here's, here's the summary, here's, here, here's the bottom line. It brings content and styling tools together. Uh, effectively together. It merges menus and modules into the site customizer in, the, you know, in, in appropriate places where you would want to find them. Um, whereas the other couple of page builders that, that I looked at really have a fairly awkward interface uh, for those parts of the site. Uh, it integrates the co collection, all of UThemes templates, the style customizer, the page builder, and also the UI kit front end network, front end framework, and puts it all together. And um, again, it's well thought through. The UX feels smooth and seamless. And um, it's kind of the place that I'm, I'm getting used to it as a place I go to work on content and I just stay there for periods of, of time. And uh, I'm getting a little bit of flow. You know, I'm not very good at this at all, not, not, not in any shape or form, but I'm trying to get better and I think this helps. So the developer experience, and we're getting to the tail end of this now, I'm nearly done. Custom fields. UTheme Pro treats articles as rich documents in collections. So your article is, is basically uh, a unit of information on the site, but it's a rich unit. And they're organised in true Joomla fashion by categories, also with tags. And UTheme allows you to perform custom queries on these articles and retrieve different attributes from them. Custom article fields are fully available for block and page design in UTheme Pro. And you can control the field display depending on the value of another field, which can also be a custom field. We just have a quick look at that. So articles. Now, it turns out, Okay. that the company articles, the company posts on this site are a bit special. They've been extended. Okay. And the designers have created a field group called company, which is just straightforward. Users disappeared. Here are fields, logo, street, city, country, email, phone, website, socials. Okay of various different types, just standard Joomla content types, custom field types, okay? And they all belong to the field group com company. And article categories, company categories are associated with that field group. I think we see that here. I'm not sure exactly where that hooks up. Uh, you've got a... Uh... Maybe yeah, under field, field, group. Group. Uh, field groups. It's field groups, um, I think, is where you associate publishing options. 
Russell, you need, you'll need to go to the articles themselves within that category. Yeah, I know, but there's field group. Well, that's where the field groups will show up. Yep, okay. All right, so we'll pick that category. Any company category will do, a subcategory will do. Okay, and when we pick up any one of these, there's one I've been using for demos, hopefully is a little bit closer to hand. Lots and lots of samples on these demo sites. They really, they really do give you a lot to work with. Um, back one, one more. Speedwagon, which belongs to the category companies full service. And because it does, it has this tab here on the article edit, which sets out all the fields that belong to the company field group. And here you can fill each of those out on the record, on the article record, as though they were you know, ordinary data extensions in an ordinary database. There's logo, okay, that's got you know, full function and streets and so forth. Um, here's a repeating group, group of socials, and that's a little array of titles and links, the titles being social sites. Services is a, a, a group of tags, okay, which you can select um, one or the other. Here's projects, which is a long list, okay, a bit of a multi-dimensional list with titles, descriptions, images, okay. Alt text and a little list of services, which again are tags, and then a link. And here we finally, on this article record, again, it's a company post record, okay? That's a company post article, okay? We're also allowed to specify the clients for that company. So when we go and we have a look at the site, or we could look at it in U-Theme itself. Because it would work the same. You would, you would have the same set of controls and the same display if you were in the builder, okay, as you would on the live site. But when we look at this, when we look at this article, we see here a logo. That's that. Here we've got a title, probably that. Okay. Here we've got some descriptive text, here we've got some contact details. Here's that list of tags for services. Okay. That's been rendered as a text list. Here we've got a thing, it's a sub-nav okay, that has been made out of the entries in the social Field, Twitter, Facebook, with the links behind them. There they are. Okay. This here is the keynote image for the article because that's where it's been placed in this blog layer. And here is the array of projects. This first one is engineered dot with some tags and some description and a link and an image. And over here we find engineered dot with some description and an image and a list of tags and a link. And it's it's just, you know, you can you can pick this up in the design, you can pick these elements up in the design and use them as though they were just ordinary parts of the article. I will just quickly do that if I can. Okay. Now, we were looking at company posts. Full service. Okay. And Speedwagon. This here, okay, is a company category blog which shows the articles within the category. And this is the thumbnail for Speedwagon. When we click on that, we saw the article that we were just looking at, company post, okay, okay. 
that's that type of single article. That's the template that we have for this type of post. If we have a look at this thing here, I am sorry, that ran away from me again. I needed to turn on the builder. And then I see the sub nav here. The socials, uh, I keep doing that. When I should be just clicking on it. Okay. And we see here that we have dynamic content. Whoops. I think that's, which one am I after? Matthew, you got any clues here? This is, this content here, aha, aha, okay, is from the socials field of the company field group and socials has two attributes in its array. It's got title and link, okay? So this part of the, the content for this element of each subnet Subnav element is the title from that array on the article, and this is the link from that array on the article. And you just set up that much, and however many socials there are in that array, it just writes them out for you and writes out a nice little subnav that does that trick, okay, and gives you that on every post of that type that has that custom data available. Now, is that good or what? It, I, I, my experience is that it's a really um, a big advancement for you theme going from version one to version two with the dynamic content. The beauty of what Russell's showing there as well is that yes, some elements there, which you can see with the cylinder item is telling you what's grabbing the content from custom fields, but it doesn't stop you from actually adding individual content as well that's not dynamic, but you're actually altering it from within the builder itself. Um, and the new aspect is that template, they only had the builder and now they've added the template feature, which then if you alter something from that layer within the template cap section, it's going to, alter every single page that's related to that and linked to that template builder section. Um, with that in mind, uh, you then didn't have, in version one, it didn't have that. And therefore, if you wanted the same layout, the, just the, the downside of it, version one was if you wanted to have the same layout for everything and then you're loading things in, you would sometimes have to go back and individually change that one item on all the pages, whereas this now, using custom fields and that new feature of the template builder is helping you eliminate that and fast track a lot of uh, dull tasks that you need to do. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a new way to think about design in Joomla. Fair income, it's, it's a bit of a mind bender and um, I, I thought it was kind of worth exploring in a bit of detail because I, I think it adds something to the process. So, okay, so I'll just finish off now. We're just about done. <clears throat> the last thing is UI kit as the foundation for the whole stack. Youthlim Pro drives UI, UI kit, as you've seen, UI kit's the engine. UIKit becomes the common ground for designers and developers. UIKit, you know, to designers is a visual vocabulary, um, a WYSIWYG vocabulary, an asset, you know, a collection of assets. For developers, um, it's a front-end framework and they can code directly in that and they can work with the designs in the same code that the designers actually produce. Up to a point, I mean, you know, your, your page designs are actually in the database in Joomla and that's not necessarily directly accessible to an IDE, well, it can be, um, but 
you know, at least the designers and devs are on the same page as far as, you know, the, the visual, uh, if you like, the visual um, framework, the, you know, the, the visual language for the site is concerned. You, in Utheme, if you want to customise a site, there is a step that you take in the file system to create a, se a separate directory, a parallel directory, so that you can create a child theme for the site customization. And then once you've got that selected in your builder, then all your customizations go straight off to that, so that any updates to Utheme don't affect any customizations that you've made. You can move them in and out pretty much at will uh, and your, yeah, your site customization, your site build is protected from the upgrade cycle. Um, you can get right down to the less CSS if required and that, that's another neat trick. I'm just going to show that off as well. Um, if we go back to style and UI components, let's pick something like an article. Just to make the point here, over in UI Kit, in the UI Kit documentation, we have an article object, an article component, and here's the rundown on the article component. This is what a developer would use, okay, if he was hand coding markup um, in UI Kit for a UI Kit site. Okay, and you can have a guy who basically has not got a Joomla system at all but can still write UI, UI kit code. And it still runs in a browser and it still looks the way it's supposed to. So that's, you know, that's fine. Um, that, that gives you some options. So... Russell, another great option with that in particular um, is for instance, if you, one of the elements for instance, might be you, the accordion. And if where you want the styling and some of the uh, elements that you, that are standalone within U theme, but you can't get them to load up within the accordion. You can go to the UI kit and you can actually grab that, you grab that code and that style and, and dump that within one of the accordion elements. And then it, it piggybacks off the existing styling of the U theme style that you've got. Yeah. So, which is a really great benefit as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you can pinch snippets from everybody, which are, I'm just, just about to get to that. Um, these parts here, okay, these attributes of all the different UI kit elements. See that little, the tool tip that popped up there, at article title font family. That string is actually the less CSS variable in the UI kit less files that controls that attribute. So you can get down to the actual less, you can code less, and then U theme, you know, the site's U theme will compile that and create that into the UI kit, you know, CSS and, you know, the front end stuff. But at a development level, you can make changes in less CSS that are site wide and that will also be transparent to the page builder because the next time you pick up the pages, those changes are reflected directly from, from the less underneath all of it. Uh, yeah, just, that is just, yeah, that, that links back to the, the foundational code of the entire site. So that it doesn't matter where you want to go, you want to go to the bottom of this stack or you want to go to the top and there's links up and down all the way through it which again, just shows how much work they have put into the UI uh, of this product. And the last thing, there's UI kit plugins for a number of common IDEs, web IDEs, VS Code and Atom are among them. And I'll just quickly show you that. <clears throat> Here's an empty document. Okay, sitting inside the Creative Hub site. It's just any old HTML. Okay, but I may want some, some UI kit. I might be writing some new UI, new UI kit code for this. All classes start with UK. Okay, so you see I have a drop down because the VS Code plugin provides me with snippets 
that use that, that use the UIKit classes and that implement the most common options. The first of these is UK Dollar, which creates a basic UIKit document. So there you go. Okay, and we are often racing. And then the next thing that I might want yeah, at this particular point in this brand new document is maybe an accordion. So we have some samples. The guy who's written this plugin has, has provided these snippets that just do this and they give you UK accordion title and UK accordion content within this um, container, which is, we go back to article, accordion, Go on. There you go. UK accordion title, UK accordion content. Those are the elements that are contained within yeah, the UI kit component. And VS kit knew that. Okay. And also, of course, it's sensitive to the UI kit classes themselves. Okay. So you can always, you, you, you can just apply those um, to objects at a hand to assets at a hand-coded level uh, as, as you need to. That's, uh, that is a plugin which is community supported <coughs> and it's this guy here. It's just as well he's done a good page okay because he's documented all of the the, the contents of all of those snippets. Accordion, for instance, reveal content. This shows you the stuff that he's provided in his plugin um, for these UI kit snippets. Ha! Okay. Devs can build, yep, yeah, you can do that. You can build new custom elements uh, in your page builder, in your page builder palette. You know, if, you, if you're not happy with the 34 that they've already provided and you want something, you know, maybe a company branding thing or a landing page thing or a call to action thing, you can build custom elements of your own from scratch and, and you could build whole apps that conform to the UI kit standard that are just going to snap right into this environment. Um, so it's, uh, it's a bit of a new partnership to form for third party vendors as well. And there's already a couple on board um, that are shipping custom elements for you theme that you can buy on subscription and you can snap into the environment. So there we are. <laughs> okay, I will stop sharing. Oh, thanks, Russell. Um, now, my chat just moved. We had all the questions that people had in there for you. Uh, let's continue. Uh, sorry, I lost the chat screen, which has. Uh, where is it? Yeah. All right, so um, a few people had to leave, so they said thank you, very informative. <clears throat> uh, so for most of it, you don't need to do any real CSS at all, do you? It's all no, driven no. by the, the kit. No, it's just the page builder. The page builder is where you live. Um, and the customizer. Like the one site saying. that I've had in the past that used you theme had some very peculiar requirements. So um, there is a way to put custom CSS in, but yeah, we're avoidable. Um, that'd be the tip. You can actually apply custom CMS, CSS to specific elements, yeah. or you can go to the advanced section in settings to do a across the board so add a CSS, class. Um, customization as well. So. Yeah. Right. Um, Jeff, you're asking whether um, the final page load when a page is finished in nice page, I guess for all three, as to whether, so one of the things I don't like page builders doing is is bloating uh, your finished code. I know that you think it's fairly clean. Um, some of the WordPress ones like Elementor add 
20 lines of code to do something that if the, the CSS was cleaner would be a, a single div. Um, so does, do they, do you find that these leave a lot of excess footprint? Russell? It's not as bad as it used to be. Nice page um, is a very different product from artist gear. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of the reservations that people have about that whole tool set dates back to the, um, the clumsy class yeah. system that, that artist gear, yeah, dragged along, but nice page is a very different beast. Okay. Yeah. If it weren't, for you, Theme Pro, that's what I'd be using for, for preference. Okay. I'll have to take a look at that because um, that was the one thing. Well, you can get a free copy. Yeah, just yeah, download yeah. it and have it have a burn. And if you, if you want the assets as well, that's what you pay for. Yeah. Because um, I know that when I had artists here in the past, the asset library was one of the things that was sort of part of the, the standalone program. Um, but the, um, the ability, yeah, so one of the templates I'm using at the moment is um, using the right framework by Joomla Shack. And it has like six settings for the template and that's all you can change. And everything else you need to go back and do in CSS or, or template override. So um, there's certainly an advantage if you do multiple sites to having a tool that does all that sort of stuff together. So. Hmm. Um, any other questions anyone's got? Those are the, sort of the two main ones that I'd spotted. And don't forget, I muted everybody, so you'll need to, if you are trying to ask a question, we can't hear you. Oh, all good. Okay. All right, Russell, so. Um, I'm going to finish up.